It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, 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 and Merry Christmas! You found your way to my neighborhood. This is Father Ralph's neighborhood. And I'm so glad you're here as we celebrate this Christmas week. Christmas is such an important and big feast day in our church that we celebrate it not just for the 25th of December, but for an octave. That's eight days, eight days of Christmas. Uh, that gets us up to seven, eight maids, eight maids. That gets us up to the eight maids of Elkane. Okay. Uh, just so that you're prepared. And uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here. My name's Father Ralph, and uh, I, I, I'm so happy to be able to uh, to, to join you uh, for a little bit of uh, reflection on this, this most precious and most special day in our church here. Uh, you know... <laughs> I had the, the grace and the great gift of uh, celebrating my first Christmas Masses at our newly formed parish family of St. John Neumann in Homewood, Illinois, and uh, people were just so wonderful, and uh, music was so beautiful, and we had such a, such a nice time. I hope that you uh, were able to get to church. Uh, for, for the celebration of, of Christmas. And uh, we'd like to begin. This is probably one of the most familiar scripture readings uh, for us fans of uh, Charlie Brown. This is that beautiful reading from the Gospel of St. Luke that Linus uh reads to all of the kids at the uh, uh, at the set of their Christmas play in Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, so it should sound familiar. And it is it is really the Christmas story. St. Luke uh, being a, a Greek scholar, he knew how to write and he wrote a beautiful beautiful, uh, description of Christmas for all of us. So if you'd like to read it along or, or later, it's the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, verses 1 to 14. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. Now, this was the first enrollment, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch 
over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of our Lord. Hopefully, you were able to hear, if not first-hand, second-hand, or third-hand, the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, this Christmas, both at the Midnight Mass and as he blessed the whole world from the balcony of St. Peter's on Christmas Day. His message couldn't have been clearer. Uh, we have commercialized Christmas, and in doing so, we are losing, we are losing our spiritual rootedness in what should be the greatest spiritual moment of salvation history, that the God so loved the world that he would send his only son to be our Savior. And the incarnation, the, the word made flesh, uh, is the, the, the really the highest moment of this huge moment of salvation history, which began with the Immaculate Conception of our Blessed Mother, continued with uh, the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel first told her that she was going to be the mother of God. Into that wonderful dream that St. Joseph had where the angel told him to take Mary, his wife, into his home because the child that was about to be born was the Son of God. And this pivotal moment when all of the prophecies are fulfilled. And of course, we move forward from this moment, but hopefully not too quickly. Certainly not as quickly as the stores would have us move. Uh, for those of you who might be taking advantage of the day after Christmas sales today on this Feast of Stephen, uh, you'll go to the store and uh, in place of all of the Christmas merchandise, you'll probably see Halloween, uh, Halloween, let's say Valentine's Day. We're not that far ahead, Halloween. Valentine's Day, candy and cards and presents because that's the next big commercial uh, thing for the stores to make money off of is, is Valentine's Day. So, well, we uh, we need to put the brakes on, right? We need to make the spirit of this Christmas celebration last through this octave, this eight days. And you know, there are many cultures in our world that continue to celebrate Christmas all the way through to the Feast of the Presentation of our Lord, which takes place on Groundhog Day, but I don't think the two have anything to do with anything. But, you know, if your neighbor is leaving up their Christmas de uh, decorations, don't uh, don't accuse them of being lazy, uh, because many, many cultures 
continue to celebrate. In fact, some cultures don't even exchange gifts on Christmas Day. Christmas Day is the day to go to church and pray. And gifts are exchanged on what we call Little Christmas, the Feast of the Epiphany, the day that the wise men brought their gifts uh, to the baby Jesus at the manger. And so we we exchange gifts uh, in imitation. And what drove the wise men to do this? Their tremendous, incredible joy at having found our Savior. So when we give gifts, those gifts are rooted in love. Love for our Lord, and of course, love for the person that we are giving the gift to. We have to be careful not to let that deeper meaning of gift giving get lost in all of the commercialization of Christmas. I am a huge fan of Mel Brooks. Uh, and uh, one day, if I have the time, I may, uh, I may, may write uh, uh, the gospel according to Mel Brooks. He's uh, one of my favorites. Anyway, if you saw Spaceballs, Spaceballs, the movie, uh, anyway, they, Mel Brooks uh, played a character called Yogurt. And yogurt was meant to uh, be a, a takeoff of Yoda from Star Wars. And, uh, you know, yogurt the magnificent, yogurt the wise. No, 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 just plain yogurt. And, uh, as he gave the group, I'm not going to ruin the movie for you on the off chance you haven't seen it yet, but as he gives the cast of characters a tour, they stop at their pop-up kiosk, and he tells them this is where the movie makes all of its money. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. And I always think of that moment in that movie uh, when Christmas comes along, because really, has that what Christmas becomes? The Holy Father spot on when he says that we have ruined the spiritual spirituality of Christmas with merchandise, merchandising, merchandise. In 2009, a Christmas-themed commercial was produced by Folgers Coffee. Rest assured, I don't get penny one from Folgers for, for sharing this with you. But I was literally moved to tears by this commercial. You may remember it. The brother who had been away from home working in Africa is able to find his way back home for Christmas. Everyone's trying to wait up for him, but they, they fall asleep, except for his sister. And when he gets to the front door, his sister throws the door open and greets him, and he looks at her as she throws her arms around him and says, Are you my sister? No. And uh, that's that, that wonderful moment of reunion and love. And he has a small present for her. Uh, and this, this small box, he gives it to her and he says, Here, I brought you something. And she takes a moment, and she looks at the gift, and she looks at her brother, and she takes the stick-on bow <clears throat> off the package and puts it on her brother's lapel. And he looks, and he says, 
what's this? And she says, you are my Christmas present this year. That is the part of gift giving that we cannot lose sight of. Whatever we really want for Christmas or get for Christmas, the real meaning of the gift is the love that it symbolizes. And we need to make sure that the person not only enjoys the gift that they are receiving, but that they really feel that gift of love that they know how precious they are. So I have kind of a unique homework assignment for you this Christmas week. I need you, before you throw all your gift wrapping away, to find one of those bows that were on the package. And I have one here. Uh, my sister-in-law, Mary, is the best when it comes to wrapping presents. I mean, the best. It's almost like you hate, you hate to take the uh, wrapping off. They're all so beautiful. This is actually kind of a, a uh, uh, modest example. This white point set up. And uh, so find one of your bows and go to the person you love. And you may have to find, of course, more than one bow. Go to the people you love this week and uh, yeah, put the bow on them. And they probably won't understand what you're doing. But tell them, I love you. I treasure you. I cherish you. You are my Christmas present this year. I think we can, in the midst of all of the gift giving, take a step away from merchandising, 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 and rediscover the true meaning of Christmas. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. It is Christ the Lord. And his birth brings true love into our lives. And through our lives, into our world. I can't thank you all enough for putting up with my erratic uh, drop schedule on these podcasts. I can't thank you all enough for, for listening to them so faithfully week after week. And if I could give you a, an electronic bow, which I suppose I did with the cover art for today's podcast, I would. I would reach right through your screen and put a big, beautiful bow on each of you and tell you how much I love you, how much I cherish you and treasure you. You are my Christmas present this year. And good Lord willing and the crick don't rise, we will be back next week to celebrate the octave of Christmas, the feast of Mary, the mother of God, the Theotokos, without whom Christmas would certainly not have been possible. Until then, we pray that the angels that sang glory to God in the highest 
at Christmas Day to the shepherds. We pray that the angels of our Lord will watch over you and protect you and guard you and guide you in all of your ways. Pray that the Lord will fill your heart and soul with the power of his most Holy Spirit that you will see through the gift you give to the love with which it is given. May our Lord bless you and keep you this Christmas and always. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Merry Christmas.